So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use MySQL Workbench to set up um, a database. I thought that we would go through and look at designing a database for um, a garage that works on cars. So we're going to call it Jim Bob's Garage. And so the first thing I'm going to do is come down here to Models and add a model. And when you do, you get this setup. So there are this is one way to set up your database, and you can add tables and um, add things in. But what I want to do is go to the model, or I'm sorry, to add a diagram. So this is going to bring up an EER diagram, and remember enhanced entity relationship. And we're going to start adding in some tables. So I'm going to use four tables. I might have to move these around as I add things into them. So four tables. And I'm going to have one for vehicles, one for customers, one for the mechanic, and one for um, when a customer brings their car in to have it worked on. All right, so I'm going to double click on this first table. And I'm going to add some columns to it. So table one, and we'll have this be the vehicle table. And this is going to have, so each vehicle is going to have, um, sorry, each entry in this table is going to have an ID, but, huh, there we go. When you double click this, it should give you an automatic um, ID that comes up with ID and then the name of the table, so ID vehicle, and automatically make it an integer. And then you look at these tabs. This belongs to primary key, so this is important. In every table, there is a key, which is a unique identifier for entries into that table. So in this case, we're going to use this integer ID vehicle to be um, the unique identifier. So in terms of you know people, you think about unique identifiers for people, you can't really use last name, first name. There are lots of people that have the same name. So what do we have that we can use for unique identifiers? Well, you can use a social security number. Now there's you know, other issues maybe with using social security numbers, but the idea is that inside a table, you have to have some kind of unique identifier. And so this is set up to automatically give you one um, when you create a table. Okay, so let's see. For a vehicle, we're gonna to wanna to know the make of the vehicle. Oh, and that's, so that's the primary key. The primary key means this is how I'm going to identify um, entries in this table. Uh, model. Uh, the year. The color. Um, all right, so that will be enough for the vehicle. Now I'm going to go over and look at table two. And table two, we'll have that be the customer. I don't know why I capitalized these things. So I'm going to double click here and see it automatically brings up the ID customer and makes it part of um, the primary key. And then for customers, we're going to want last name, customer. And we'll see why I'm putting in all this detail, last name, customer, first name, customer, in a second. Uh, maybe we'll put in just address. You might want to separate this out into street and city and all that kind of stuff. But for the sake of this, we're not going to be really using this database and putting it into um, or implementing it. So oh, one more row. So I'm double clicking on these rows to... Um, add them and I'm going to add one for first visit so we can keep track of when uh, or how long we've had a customer and this one I'm going to change to a different type of information this is going to be a date so over here you can choose the data type and there's obviously a huge list of data types that you can choose from um, going to that more in the future all right so we have customers now and let's see what else do we need we need mechanics to work on the cars. We'll 
create that first ID and then Now, so this gets into the level of detail here. Um, and why I am using, I'm gonna put it in the start date. So when the mechanic started working for us, um, we might wanna put some other things in here. Again, I have this bad habit of capitalizing things when it doesn't matter. Um, this one, let's see, pay rate. We are just going to put that in as a float for now. Um, okay, so coming back to this variable name, two things. One, you shouldn't have, use the same variable name twice, even if they're in different tables. So if I use last name up here for customer, then... I can't use last name for mechanic. Um, so you just, you can't have the same variable in a database. You can't use it twice. Um, the other thing is, you know, we are use this variable and it looks kind of ugly in some sense, last name mechanic, but the user, or the end user of this database, if they were building this for Jim Bob's garage, would never see this. So there's no worries there. Okay, and last table, So this is going to be when they bring their car in for work. ID for the visit. And then I want the date. And how long we worked on it. And that could be two and a half hours or so. We'll put that in as a float. Um, and oh, maybe we'll keep track of the mileage of the car. Okay. I'll close this down. I know this is hard to see on the video. I'm, I'm sorry for that. I'm gonna actually make this bigger now. Um, the problem is, when I do this, the font gets hard to read. There's a certain amount of irony here. I'm going to rearrange my tables. Okay, now, the thing is, these things are related to each other. So we can def define the relationships um, through this table and notice that when I put in the vehicle, I didn't put anything in here about customer information. So the, each customer can own multiple vehicles and I'm going to put a relationship in here that says there's a relationship between customer and vehicle. And the way I'm going to do that is come down here and the relationships are down here. This is going to be a non-identifying relationship. In other words, we can identify the vehicle without knowing the customer. So I'm going to click here and vehicle. This is where the many part is, many vehicles to one customer. I'm going to click here on customer ID and that sets up a relationship. So if you hover over this relationship, it will show you that I said if you hover over it, I'm hovering. Well, apparently it's not going to show me. I normally should bring up a little window that gives um, some information about the relationship we've defined. Um, notice that by defining this relationship, it actually put a new variable over here um, in our vehicle description that contains a customer ID, and it auto labels it. So the labeling is going to have the format customer, which is the table name, and then underscore, and then the variable um, ID customer. And it automatically makes it an int, so it has the same uh, variable type. Okay, so I want a few more of these. Um, let's see. Um, every visit probably should have a vehicle and one of those. So we're going to go one to one on that. And 
click on the visit first and then the vehicle. And apparently I did that wrong. Let's try it again. Oh, I must have lost the thing. So I click on the visit the vehicle. And the one you click on first is the one that gets the variable. So now each visit has a vehicle identifier. Um, each visit, I'm going to want to have a mechanic. And let's see, I think each visit probably should have a customer. So there you go. There's one way to set up some tables and some relationships um, in MySQL Workbench. What we're going to do next is learn how to do this um, using another way, using the model builder that when we first came in here we were looking at. Notice that now when we come over to the model builder, this actually has um, four tables already set up for us. Uh, so we'll come back next video, look at this model builder. And then we might start looking at how you build these things from the command line.